What is up guys? Uh, just wanted to make a video going over some of my equipment and uh, settings and that sort of thing. I've had quite a lot of questions over the years and thought that this would be a nice way to be able to elaborate on some of that. I'm going to try and make it kind of brief and as quick as possible but if you want me to go into it in a bit more detail feel free to you know leave comments and I'll, I'll answer any questions that I can. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so I thought I'd start with the uh, Warwick Fortress 1 four-string bass. So some of the specs about this bass. Uh, the body is a three-piece maple wood. The neck is Wenge, same with the fingerboard, Wenge. It's a PJ pickup configuration, um, active. You can switch it to passive with the push-pull knob on the volume. Here we've got the, um, the balance between the pickups. I edge it in favor of the P pickup, uh, it's around 60% usually. Um, I play a lot uh, close to the neck and over the P pickup, so that really helps get that attack sound. And down here we've got the, the bass control, the tone control. I have that as well at about 60. And then here we've got the treble, which I roll back to about 40%. It's a real robust word, so it helps with that attacky sort of sound. One thing that I do love about this bass is, um, for a live purpose, the extended horn here. It just makes it so balanced. Um, a lot of Warwick basses can be a little neck heavy, but when you take your left hand away, it just it stays exactly where it is, so really comfortable to play. It's uh, definitely taken a bit of a beating over the years, but it is you know, built for it, so it's great. Uh, let's move on to the five string. This is the Thumb Bolt-On Dirty Blonde LTD 2006. So it's got a bird's eye poplar top on the body, and then behind is a swamp ash on this part, and then the neck is a flamed maple, and uh, the fingerboard is ebony. The pickup configuration is very similar to the Fortress, except it's got a twin jazz down at the bottom here. This is an example of one of those ones that's all neck heavy though, you see when you take your left hand off it uh, just falls down like that. Uh, it's got nice little gull and lays across the fingerboard there with a lined with a little bit of a power shell, so it's, it's just a really unique sounding bass and so versatile. So with the electronics here, active, passive, uh, volume, then underneath that we've got the, uh, the pan for the pickups. Um, so with this one I usually have it bam smack in the middle. Then below that we've got the uh, mid-tone controls. Then up here we've got the uh, treble controls with a push-pull knob. And if you uh, pull it out, then it gives you um, a single coil pickup here. It deactivates the twin jazz pickup, just makes one. Uh, push it in, you got the twin jazz. Then underneath that we've got the, uh, the bass control. So there is a lot that you can do just on the bass itself. You know, 34 inch scale, 24 frets, same as the Fortress, except five strings with this guy. A pretty amazing instrument. I'm in love with it. Okay, so uh, let's get into the amp. I'm using the SVT Classic, which is just a beast. I've used a lot of amps over the years, and this is just uh, it's the way to go. Only catch is it will break your back when you try and lift it, but yeah, tube amp. The settings on it that I use, uh, the gain is at around three or four. Then the bass, I keep at four. The mid-range I have at around four or five, the frequency I put at two, the treble around five, maybe six. I like to boost the treble on the amp, sometimes I roll it back on the pedals, but the pedals are really where I uh, fine-tune things. Um, so yeah, it's uh, pretty simple up here. And then underneath we have the, uh, the Pro Neo 4x10 cabinet, which is, uh, which is just so nice for its response time. It just feels like as soon as you touch the string you just it's right there, so yeah, great setup, can't complain. Okay, so here's my pedal board. Uh, it looks a bit weird, but I'll explain it. Uh, feel free to take note of any settings too, because this is pretty much how I have it set um, for my covers and recordings. The Boss ME50B here is my first ever pedal. I've had the same one for over a decade now, and it's uh, really stood the test of time, so look at that, it's a beast. How I've used it has changed over the years. Um, for my first video, this was all I had, um, and this is all I really needed for a long time. The filter tone, I used a mid-shape boost, and then I added some drive with this section. I used the onboard compressor, and uh, then the EQ here to really uh, dial things in. 
over time I added these pedals, which pretty much achieve the same thing, but uh, I can just uh, dial it in with a bit more articulation. But now I kind of have it in the signal chain for an octave, and then sometimes a little chorus, reverb, delay. I still use the EQ section. I cut the compressor, I don't use that, and uh, the volume pedal too sometimes. In case something goes wrong here, I can just use the Boss ME50B and uh, still have everything. Um, it's got its own compressor on it, uh, EQ, tone shapes, delays, everything. So yeah, uh, the signal chain goes the uh, Boss Chromatic Tuner into the Supersymmetry Compressor, which is awesome, especially paired up with the Microtubes B7K, which is what I use um, to get the drive, a little bit of drive and grit. It's just so nice with the blend control to be able to blend your normal tone with the drive tone so you can maintain the natural sound as well. Then the fuzz sounds are now um, being achieved from the, uh, the hairy Big Muff. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> then uh, we've got the, uh, the MXR EQ, which I usually use just to cut some low end and play stuff with a bit more clarity. And from there I split a signal, one going to the DI and one going to the amp. As in a live situation, uh, I use it, I send the, the DI to the front of house and then I can still adjust the uh, stage volume on the amp itself. Uh, the problem that I've encountered with uh, using the DI from the Ampeg is the uh, adjusting the volume uh, on stage, adjust the volume front of house and that can upset the sound guy, so, you know. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the, uh, the pedal board for you. Okay, so I thought I'd just do a quick jam just to give you um, an idea of the sound of the default setup that I've run, which is the supersymmetry compressor going into the Microtubes B7K, which is just giving it that bit of drive, and from there it goes into the Boss ME50B, uh, which I'm basically just using for the EQ section. Um, from there it goes into the SVT, so uh, here's some examples of that. to hear a comparison of the B7K on and off. This is it on, and then this is it off. Let's see, it's quite a difference. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna give you an example of how you can get a lot more experimental with this setup, and I, I haven't really used any of this in covers, but I do uh, when it comes to writing and original stuff. So I'm gonna start by adding a uh, chorus and reverb, and then as it gets into it, I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, muff in there. So. Uh, yeah, here we go. get a little muddy when you keep that delay in there, but you can take it right out and go... It's a bit of tap dancing, but yeah, it's a lot of options.
one thing I did want to touch on is uh, technique versus tone and how um, closely tied they are together. A lot of people are asking about specific EQ settings, um, but the truth is, if you really strip down the sound and uh, take all the pedals out, it is about how you attack the string, where you're playing it on the bass. Um, so, like, here's an example of, you know, the basic finger style um, with, like, a bass line. to get more aggressive with it and add that slappy sound without slapping, still playing finger style, then listen to this. That's a way of just getting that slap sound, still using finger. So if you think about how you slap the bass, and try and get that same sound, but just with your fingers. So it's instead of like stroking the string, plucking it, you're, you're hitting it. So you know, in a, in a context you get like. Uh, so one other pedal that I like to use is the MXR 10 band EQ and I really use it to scoop out the low end when I want to play something with a bit more clarity and uh, it can get a bit muffled so uh, this really helps bring out some of those articulated notes. Um, so here's an example with the MXR 10 band EQ in the signal chain. <laughs> everything. Um, feel free to let me know if you'd like me to elaborate on anything in a little more detail. Um, leave comments and uh, feel free to ask any questions. But yeah, thank you for checking my videos out. Thank you for the continued support. It really is quite inspiring. So cheers guys. <laughs>